A unit vector is just a vector whose length, whose magnitude is one. So for example, if I have a vector uh, v equals, uh, let's see, let's just use one comma two, then the magnitude of vector v is the square root of one squared plus two squared, which is the square root of five. And the unit vector for vector v is the same vector, one comma two, scaled back so that its length, instead of being the square root of five, is one. So I need to divide the length of that vector. I need to divide the components of that vector by the reciprocal of the square root of five. I can write it this way, or I can write it as the two components, one over root five, because that's just a scalar, right? So I can, I can multiply that one over root five into the vector and get the components that way. I, you'll, you'll see it both ways, with the scalar outside and with the scalar distributed across the components. If I want to verify that the length of this uh, new unit vector is in fact one, all I need to do is take these components and use them in the distance formula, in the uh, magnitude formula that we, that we know. This is the unit vector for vector v. The magnitude of that vector is the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared. The first component is one over root five. The second component is two over root five. And when I simplify that, I get one over five. One squared is one over five plus four over five, which is the square root of five over five, which is the square root of one, which is one. So the length of this vector, the magnitude of this vector is one. So this is a unit vector. We can also find unit vectors for vectors in R3. This is in R2. And in R3, let's say we have the vector w equals negative 1, 3. I'm just going to get nasty here, 1 seventh, just because the magnitude of vector w is the square root of negative 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 seventh squared. And that is the square root of 491 over 49. I did that off screen on my calculator. I'm not that fast. I can rewrite this as the square root of 491 over the square root of 49, but the square root of 49 is just 7. That's as far as we can reduce that. So what we have here is that the magnitude of vector w is root 491 over 7. I know that's really ugly, but the vectors that we've been playing with are, have been really nice, and they're not always really nice. So now what I want to do is, because I'm, what I'm looking for here is a unit vector. I'm looking for the unit vector associated with, the, with vector w. And that is going to be the vector negative 1, 3, 1 seventh. But that vector has a magnitude of root 491 over 7, so I need to scale it back. And in order to do that, all I need to do is multiply through by the reciprocal of 491 over 7. And what I have here now, the right pen going, uh, this is a unit vector. It has a length of 1. And again, I can confirm that just by finding the magnitude of that vector. And it's the same thing as I did down here. Take this vector, find its magnitude, and you'll find that it's 1. But you don't need to do that necessarily each time. What's important is that you scale back the, the magnitude of the original vector by, uh, by the reciprocal of its magnitude. That's going to give you... Um, that's going to give you a unit vector. A little bit of vocabulary here. If I say normalize, normalize vector v, then all I'm asking you to do is find this unit vector. 
Normalize just means to find a vector going in the same direction as vector v that has a magnitude of 1. In other words, find the unit vector for vector v. It's going in the same direction, but it has a magnitude of 1. Let's check and see that it's going in the same direction. Um, we learned in a previous video that if you take a vector, and I'm going to be taking vector v here, which is 1, 2. I'll do vector v in, t in blue. Um, and if what I do with vector v is scale it, I'm going to use white for this one, scale it so that it's uh, 1 over root 5 the, uh, the time, sorry, 1 over root 5 the length of the original vector, then I'm going to get a vector that lies right on top of vector v. And I happen to know because I've done this, uh, find, find the unit vector thing, this unit vector, it has a length of 1. So what I've done is scale the vector v, and so it's going in the same direction. That's what scaling it does. It just changes its magnitude. It's going in the same direction. So if I say normalize v, well, that's what that's all this is, right? Find a unit vector that goes in the same direction of vector v, same direction as vector v, or find a unit vector for vector v is a wordy way to say that. So sometimes what we'll, what we'll say instead is normalize vector v. There's one more thing I want to talk about here, but I'm going to do it on another screen, primarily because it's a really important notation, and we're going to see this uh, quite a bit coming up. If I draw myself a Cartesian grid, this is x and this is y, and I draw on that Cartesian grid, let's do, uh, let's put some tick marks on here. So a one, two, three. One, two, that's good enough because I really only need one. Um, and I draw a vector that goes from the origin out to the point one, zero. I could represent that vector using the notation one, comma, zero. I'll use a different color to do the same thing in the y direction. I could represent this vector uh, using the co components zero, comma, one. Now, let's say I have a vector, I think I'm going to try to go with, well, let's just go with 3, 2. I know I have the space on my graph for that. That is this vector here. Okay. I can represent this vector as a combination of the other two. In other words, I can say that 3, 2 can be thought of as 3 times the vector 1 comma 0 plus 2 times the vector 1 sorry 0 comma 1 0 comma 1 and that's because of vector operations that's because of scalar uh, multiplication and vector addition and subtraction this is like saying 3 comma 0 if I multiply that 3 through and if I multiply this 2 through I get 0 comma 2, and if I add those two vectors together, I get 3, 2. So this is called a linear combination of two vectors, and we'll get into that sort of idea a little bit later on. But this combination, this, this way of combining uh, two vectors to make a third vector is not new because we've done vector addition. But what is new here is that these particular vectors are unit vectors in exactly the x direction and exactly the y direction. Notice there is no y component. Well, the y component is 0, and the x component here is 0. There's no movement in the x direction in this vector, and there's no movement in the y direction in this vector. What we have uh, come to use for sort of a shorthand for these very special vectors um, are the letters i and j. So for this vector, we're going to call it i. And this vector, we're going to call it j. And in fact, I've already drawn myself a little dot here. But what I really should have drawn is a little hat. And what the hat does is it distinguishes these two vectors as that specific type of vector. You'll sometimes hear these referred to as the standard unit vectors because they are just exactly in the x direction or the y direction. We can write any vector, 3, 2, negative 17, 
pi. We can write any vector in two dimensions using these two vectors. And in the same way as I've done here, I've found a way to write the, the vector 3 comma 2 using 3 times one of the standard unit vectors plus 2 times the other. Um, if I change the notation here uh, now so that I'm using this i and j notation, then what this becomes is, oops, I didn't, well, I don't want to use pink here necessarily. Uh, I'll do it over here. This is just 3 times the standard unit vector i plus 2 times the standard unit vector j. It's not a big deal, but it's important, and it is an alternative way of writing vectors, uh, i and j being those standard unit vectors. And you'll, it's very common. It's a very common notation. We'll see it quite a lot, and I want you to be really quite comfortable with it. You can also do the same thing in R3. Here's my best attempt at a three-dimensional graphing space. And uh, let's see, we did i in blue, so I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to go, this is my x-axis in R3. One, two, three. And here's my y-axis. And this is the z-axis. Also known, remember, as x1, x2, and x3, this different notation. When we graph, we do tend to use x, y, and z because Frankly, we, we aren't going to graph in four or, or more dimensions, right? I, there's no way to do that. We can't see four dimensions, so there's no point in trying to reproduce it. So we'll often use X, Y, and Z when we're graphing. All right, so in blue, we're going to graph uh, the unit vector, the standard unit vector I. So I'm going to go out one in the X direction and zero in the Y direction and zero in the Z direction. So this is my standard unit vector I in blue. In pink, I'm going to do the same thing for the standard unit vector j, which is 1 in the y direction, none in the z, x or z direction. So there's my j. And in green, I'll go up 1 in the z direction and none in the y, x or y direction. This is my standard unit vector k, i, j, and k. Now, if I wanted to represent the vector uh, let's see, I'll go with w equals 2, negative 1, 6. I really kind of used numbers that are a bit too big for my grid here. So let me back off that just a little bit. I'll go with 3. That vector is going to be in the x direction 2, in the y direction negative 1, and in the z direction 3. So it'll be something like that, okay? Um, but I can represent that vector as a combination of two times two times vector one comma zero comma zero. Now I'm in R three here, so I have to have an x, y, and a z component. But notice that I'm going uh, two in the x direction, like I did when I started to graph this white vector, this is vector w, 2 in the x direction, but I'm not moving in the y or the z direction at all. Um, and I can add to that, I'm actually going to subtract because it's negative 1, 1 times the vector 0, 1, 0. This is what makes my next step to go 0 in, the, so starting from here, Starting from here, I went one, uh, 2 in the x direction, and that's that's represented here, and it's also represented here. The next step, if you will, is to go negative 1 in only the y direction. So I'm going negative 1 in the y direction. And then I'm going to add to that 3 in the z direction, 0, 0, 1. And this is much more easily written as 2i minus 1j, or just minus j, plus 3k. And this is standard unit normal vector notation for R3. This was for R2.